Hey guys, this is Trace. Thanks for tuning in to D News. This week I watched Zeitgeist for the Netflix screening room. Thanks for your recommendation, guys. There are so many people who said we should watch this. And uh, my first thought is uh, they call this a documentary, but I wouldn't call it that. If you want to check out the movie, it's on Netflix. I watched it on my TV and then switched to my iPad. It was a little longer than I expected. If you don't have Netflix, get a month of free streaming by going to netflix.com slash dnews. Now I watched the first Zeitgeist. Uh, I know we thought about watching the third one, but I wanted to start at the beginning. Zeitgeist isn't really a documentary, I don't think, because it doesn't actually document. It collects media and quotes and sound bites, which all fit into a nice little package. Zeitgeist is more of like conspiracy propaganda than an attempt to document an event. I've heard many of these theories over the years, but never in one single conspiratorial orgy. It was actually pretty cool. The film is in three parts. The history of the human religion, 9-11 conspiracy, and financial conspiracy. Part one was my favorite by far. Zeitgeist's writers compiled centuries of writings to explore similarities of religious stories. They framed religion in the worship of the sun, our star, not a person. It's a battle between light and darkness, not good and evil, literally day and night. In a very simple way, the writers explored how the sun and star constellations were personified into universal human characters and how they carried that through eons. I love this bit, it was so interesting. If for some reason though you don't like conspiracy, go ahead and stop the movie at this point. If you like conspiracy, the other two parts were much more akin to your uncle's weird rantings after too many holiday cocktails. There were dramatic musical crescendos, explosions, dead bodies, and 9-11 replays flashed in this two hour piece. There have been more of those than I've seen reading the news every single day for work over the last year. They talked about how 9-11 was kind of an inside job, or at least that we knew about it, and how the financial system in the United States is designed to ruin everything. Both the second and third parts are far-fetched and kind of nitpicking in their facts. I will simply say this, when you watch it, use your critical thinking skills, and also remember Occam's razor, the simplest explanation is best. Some quotes and pieces are dated and some are not. They're put in an order that best facilitates the story. It's a lot of opinion and not a lot of really hard data. There's a lot of media usage, but not a lot of contextual usage. Conspiracy theories are tough nuts to crack. Ha! <laughs> Double meaning. I love reading and hearing them, but if you step back and you look more broadly, things don't quite fit as well as the conspiracy theory package. In the movie, they found like two guys who thought this was an inside job. And then they padded those with media and news reports from the actual day, which is a day where people were confused and afraid. Not exactly the best sourcing. And the Federal Reserve gold standard thing at the end, very compelling. I mean, yes, it's easier for me and you to understand when money is based on a unit of gold sitting somewhere in a vault, but if it were so great, wouldn't some country be using it? One country. I'll never watch this movie again but I will definitely tell my friends to watch it because it was super cool, if a little weird. Have you seen Zeitgeist? How did you feel about it? Tell me what you think in the comments, and thanks a lot for watching. If you don't have Netflix, support the show, and check out netflix.com slash dnews for a free month of Netflix streaming on all your devices. Then you can join in on our next screening room with Lacey as she checks out Psalm, a wine sommelier reality doc. I hope she grabs a glass for herself.